Uh, anybody would like to ask a question, please raise your hand before asking. And if it's a, a follow-up to that question, please listen to the complete answer before you start to ask it. So I guess, uh, apologies, you may have already uh, covered it. Um, you know when you said, if you're somebody who's already um, quite far away from the theme, uh, but you're trying to look at those do's and don'ts, can you meet them on their boundaries, like if they're backbiting? Can you be a bit flexible if your intention is that you're trying to get them closer to the theme? So, you see, if people, your brother is asking if you are from person is far away from Deen, but they are doing something, uh, backbiting or things, uh, that can you be flexible with them? Yes, you can be flexible with them, You meaning enjoining good and forbidding evil, there are levels and different ways to do it. For example, if someone is committing riba, so instead of saying it is sinful, don't do, you go in hell or anything like this, you can change the topic, for example. You can change the topic, you can talk about something uh, else. Uh, secondly, uh, you can also, for example, uh, leave the, uh, that majlis or get, get gathering, or you may say that, that, that person as well, but not giving them a very negative view, but just leave, leaving the majlis. So, ch changing the topic is the will be the becoming flexible with them. So and when again they come, uh, you listen to them, but then you talk about something similar, but which will not be, for example, that person might be naming a person, that a person, that person did this, that person did this, you know, committing riba, and you might say, yes, brother, really, I have been in this situation as well myself, and uh, I, uh, by and some people they do this and then take the conversation somewhere else. So that kind of flexibility, but it will not be allowed to join in the uh, backbiting. Uh, you you can't do that really. because the primary purpose is to save yourself. While saving yourself, you can save others. It is a great thing. But if you have to lose yourself. Your relationship with Allah, then you choose yourself and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and leave the other people to themselves. Yeah. Please also wait uh, till the mic comes to you so the people on the internet can benefit as well from your question. Uh, I just want to ask uh, there's three short questions about but two are like linked. Uh, only related to this topic today. Yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes please. Uh, huh? It's just, do you know, like, for example, uh, what's happening to a lot of Muslims around the world, how we have a biased media, a uh, lot of it's hard to take, and I want to know how Muslims, we are supposed to react to it. Also, um, you know, you did mention in the, uh, just to refer to about being skeptical or being suspicious or speculating or judging other people and I want to know how it is that we can avoid being uh, speculating, suspicious, skeptical or judgmental about other people and uh, do you know there are certain translations of the Quran you know when it comes to talking about the disbelievers and the hypocrites uh, be, uh, the Prophet is commanded to be harsh with them now am I right in saying that this translation, it should be more uh, towards a new meaning of being firm with the, these people. Because if you look up the word admonish, it, it doesn't mean being harsh with them. It means being firm with the people, telling people are firmly but not harshly. Uh, so I'm not right in saying that some people may have not translated it correctly. Right, regarding what's happening to Muslims in the world, what we should do, we should exactly do the same thing what Rasulullah sallallahu did when humanity was being wrong, there was a lot of zulm and a lot of oppression in the world. What did Prophet do? Did he establish a, a government firstly and then actually uh, said, I'm going to help these people? No, he, what he did was, he firstly 
obviously himself was a prophet, he didn't need to work upon himself, he was the perfect person. But the first thing which he gave to the Sahaba was actually these things, the greatness of Allah, the fikr and the concern of Akhira and all these things were built in them as a base and then their character building, although they were they wanted to fight, but Prophet said, you cannot, there's no command of Allah to fight in the Makkah period. You just have to bear, you just have to be to suffer, and that was the tarbiyah of the Sahaba. So gradually, if a person follows this pattern, then there might come an opportunity where you have a, actually, uh, uh, you are in a position to help the oppressed people, the poor people. So that is the way. Today, what we are doing is actually, let's say a person, says that you should give fruit of apple to people who are hungry. The other person says, if you want to give fruit of apple, buy a piece of land and plant of the apple, sow the seed or the plantation of apple tree and then look after it and then you will be in a position in one day to give apples to the poor. And you say, no, 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 I want to give the apple now. Uh, no, but where you don't have them. And if you do actually steal from someone, or if you give the seeds to them only of apple trees, or the petals, uh, or the branches of the apple tree, it's not going to benefit. So, all the people think, Rasulullah has worked 20, 13, 15 years, and then the fruit actually he gave to others as well, of helping and and the the needy and the uh, the oppressed. Today when people are said, yes, yeah, they want to do the same thing, but they don't want to build the base of their Iman, their amal Saliha, their own Tazkiyah, so that actually the fruit start to bear and then they can actually distribute and give. So my answer to that in summary what I said was that we should look at the seerah of Rasulullah when the, when the people were even in more bad situation even in more bad situation than now, what he did, we should do similar thing uh, at the similar similar level. And the other thing about Quran, you mentioned uh, that some of the verses of Quran, they are saying that you should be harsher with kufar and other things. Yes, there are these verses, but they relate to different time period and different scenarios, for example in the state of war, when the war is going on, when the command comes at me that you should be harsh, strike them with your sword, that is the command of the time of war. You can't apply this on the kufal in the time of peace, for example, or actually uh, even in the time of war there are so many conditions to follow to if you want to combat and things. So those verses are related to different uh, time periods like Madinian time periods plus they are also sometime in the state of war when they were the Muslims were to uh, and Kufar came into uh, face to face they died that type of commands but if you will find those commands to give dawa to invite them you will also find in Quran when Hazrat Musa al Islam is being sent to Pharaoh to give him dawa Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to Hazrat Harun and Hazrat Musa al Islam فَقُولَ لَهُ قَوْلَ لَيِّنَا Allah Azawajal said, I say to both of you, command both of you to speak gently and live in leniency with Pharaoh. لَعَلَّهُ يَتَذَكَّرُهُ يَخْشَى Maybe then he will uh, learn or he will become fearful or will take heed uh, and guidance. تو عام تو دیکھیں اللہ اتنا بڑا کافر ہے پھر اون سے بڑا کافر کون ہو اس کو بھی اللہ پاک میں نرمی سے بات کرنا جا کے موسیٰ علیہ السلام کو رابون علیہ السلام کو فرمائے کہ شاید وہ سمجھ جائے شاید وہ ڈال جائے تو وہ جو that's how many like you're saying the media is biased media is biased or not but our own people are biased as well they don't understand Quran themselves what to say about media so maybe kufar are running it maybe they have other agenda if they are enemy I don't have any complaint against them Enemies' job is actually to uh, demonize that they will do character assassination. Then. But I'm saying to us people, the Muslims, that how much they understand these things. Something is of war, and they're applying it in the time of peace. 
and something is in the time of peace, they are applying it to the time of war. So, this is a mixture. And what was the third one question you had? Just about uh, how we use the we Muslims should avoid speculation. Okay. Uh, how can a, a person avoid speculation and being cynical of other Muslims? It's very easy. The Quran also have mentioned until you have not a hundred percent sure with seen with your own eyes and without beyond uh, actually any doubt, then you have actually opinion or you may say then even you should pray or you can because now you've seen reality you can. until it is a possibility even one or two percent of that it's it might be not like that then so the way is to follow don't follow doubt follow the conviction so don't follow the you know, feeling that you are feeling follow the facts cynical but gumani means that there is no evidence there but just based on some indication you judge the person and to get out of that situation, if you train yourself or if you adopt this strategy that you should have conviction, yakin, a fact first and then you based opinion, not on conjecture uh, and this. And this is taught practically in the level of uh, purification of mind. A person is practically taught. If you purification of the mind, ka, so the person is trained how not to be negative. So you have to learn and practically follow that exercise if you a person want to be trained. But that's rare, but, but as the simple guidance I have mentioned here. Sorry, Krista. Um, my question is, uh, in regards to going to the environment, when you interact with non-Muslims, Christians, is there any boundaries in regards to attending restaurants that serve alcohol, um, uh, Christmas dinners, and how far can you go? Right. In relation to, <clears throat> you may say there are two things. One is that there is no need, you are just going on your own accord. Uh, and where there is a sinful environment, uh, a person should avoid, a person should uh, uh, avoid best. But as for purpose of dawa, they say if you are interacting with them because of actually giving them the invitation or having establishing a social relationship, then the boundary is that you don't participate in sin and if it is like a religious, like you come to a church or anything, you don't participate in any act of worship and you don't, and if it is like they are serving alcohol and things, you don't participate in any act of sin there. That is the boundary. And in that you keep, so if you are going there for interaction, for giving dawah, so then actually like Rasulullah uh, would many times he would go to market places in the beginning, in the Meccan period, to give invite people. When people had different fest, uh, festivals, like the Arabs and the Meccans had at that time, they, in those festivals, Prophet Islam would go and invite people towards the there. But a person should be sound himself as well, so that it does not happen that rather than you inviting them, that they in, had invited you and their color becomes dominant on you. And if a person feels, have these types of feelings, then they should actually uh, retract back, uh, back completely. But then, you have to give a gift in the restaurant. You are looking at your eyes. So then, Shaitan, rather than you saving others, Shaitan has made prey upon you as well. You are also a shikar. You don't have to give a gift. So that is why the Tazkiyah as I said, that 40 years Prophet ﷺ waited to announce Nabuwa. It is for a reason. Then the instruction of the Dawah was given. Then three years again there was a different type of Dawah, private type of Dawah. Then again the Tarbi of Sahaba. So there are uh, degrees. But uh, the thing is that you might say that I might not have so much long life. 
if I go on these patterns, I might die after one year, five years, and I have not reached. The answer is, many Sahaba, you adopt the right strategy, many Sahaba even were martyred even in the beginning periods of Nabuwa of Bin Makkah. They were successful, they didn't see any dominance of Islam, any victory of Makkah or the migration, they didn't. Hadar Sumayya, Yasir, and other people who were martyred there. Look at Sayyidina Hamza, he didn't see the victory of Makkah. He only saw Badr and in Ohud he saw actually uh, defeat. Outwardly he saw, he saw defeat was happening when, when, when he was when he martyred. But, but how successful he is that he has Sayyid al shuhada the leader and the chief of all the shaheeds he has become, but he does. So we are not really uh, responsible for what the change outside, which uh, that it must happen in our lifetime, in our way. All we are that we should have the right strategy, right means, and in those means, keep struggling. And if you die on the way, you are successful. If you reach your destination in this world, you are still successful. But what many Jamaats and people in the world have done, they become depressed. Why Muslims are not changing? Why they are people, Kufar oppressing? So they have adopted strategies which do not, uh, Islam does not allow them, like actually killing innocent people, bombing people here and there, and defaming Islam and all these things. This is a sign of that they have become depressed. They become agitated. They, we can't wait because we, they want to change quickly and they want to react. So we can't react like Ufara are reacting. We can't react like Shaitin are reacting. We can't react like animals are acting. We can't do that. We have to have a fine strategy and we stay in those limits and aim that if victory happens, if we achieve our purpose, Alhamdulillah, good and well, even if we don't achieve outwardly, still like Imam Hussain Razi Outwardly did he gain Khilafa? Gain, did he did he gain Khilafa? No, he didn't gain Khilafa outwardly. Was he victorious over Yazid outwardly? No, not, not in the war, not in the, in the weaponry. But his strategy was right. That he wanted to convey the message of truth. And he wanted to convey the message of truth that what is right, what is wrong. And he did not actually use any such thing. Uh, similarly, Sayyidina Ali radiallahu ta'ala also, when he fought with the people of uh, in Syria, uh, the army sent by Hazrat Amir Mawiyah radiallahu ta'ala, the Syrian army, because they were away from, <coughs> it, it was in Syria, the battle, they confiscated the wells, the springs of water, and didn't even let uh, Sayyid Ali Razillah, the army take any water from there. That's what, that, that was their act. Sayyidina Ali Razillah then fought to get the abza or to get the possession of that, those wells. And when he got the possession of the world, he said, even the enemy army, they can use it and animals can take water from there. So meaning you should have the right strategy, no matter sometime outwardly if you are defeated uh, or seen defeated like Imam Hussain radiallahu ta'ala or in the Karbala or, or any, any, in any other matter, you still are successful. Meaning our success is the falah to reach the pleasure of Allah which we have said that, that our mirage is the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this is the strategies which we uh, adopt. And then there are other Muslims who became so much uh, disheartened, they say we can't do anything. Other one group has, is bombing and doing very extreme actions in that time. The others, they said just mingle with the Kufar and others and actually we are also amongst them, we should live, we are living in 14th century, 15th century and they, they are also in the hands of Shaitan and the others also actually have gone away from the truth. So the middle, the right way would be 
to adopt the same the the true uh, the strategy which are just uh, given by Islam and just work your way peaceful and if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wills he will give you dominance if he doesn't then at least still you are successful so sometimes you have to like the brother was saying Muslims Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Sulai Hudaybiyah then did a contract with people of Makkah that if any Muslim come towards runs away from Makkah and come towards Medina, he will be returned back to the Kuffar and then you, they will be punished and things. And if any Kafir comes back to Makkah, he will not be returned. So Prophet Islam accepted, although outwardly it seemed that it was not in the favor of Muslims, but he accepted this. And then whilst this compact uh, contract was not signed, Abhi signed the Uausper. Abi, one of the Muslim companion of Rasulullah sallam who was uh, uh, probably Hazrat Abu Jandal or another Sahabi who became Muslim and his father and the Kuffar of Makkah had chained him, chained him and was punishing him. That why you became Muslim. The contract has not been signed yet. While it's doing, it's very, very delicate situation. Whilst it was happening in between negotiation, Hazrat Abu Jandal, Allah ta'ala, another companion, I forgot the name, he came with his chains and things, he sometimes how escaped the prison of the Kuffar and of his father and came there and said, Ya Rasulullah sallam, help me, help me. And the Muslims were very happy that our one brother has come. But the, his father was there at the time of the contract, he said, O oh Muhammad وسلم, you have said that you won't, you, you, every Muslim, you have to return to us. It was his son and he was a, a Muslim, a companion, and the Muslims knew Hazrat Umar ta'ala and said, how can we do that? How can we give him back that they are going to punish our brother and torture him to death? So he was, Hazrat Umar ta'ala and others companion were very angry, they didn't want to return him and said, we had not even signed the contract. But Rasulullah Sallallahu said, I am going to keep my word. I have said so and I'll do it. And he said to Abu Jandal, be patient. Sabar ikhtiyaq karo, sabar ikhtiyaq karo. Or vapas kar diya. Meaning some people say the end justifies means. Ishtara nahi hota, Islam mein nahi hai. The means also have to be in, in the boundary of Sharia. Only then. Temporarily, sometimes you have to suffer setbacks. But the, and the end, there will be victory and if outwardly if it's not there, in the Akhirah it is there. So like the message of Brother Elias or Mishal was given to you, that if it is said to you that you have the potential, you have the potential, you just change your life and start conveying the message up to the years you live, <coughs> Alhamdulillah, you are going to join the Sahaba and Tabi'in and the Prophets and Anbiya uh, in, in that. And if you become one of these two extreme parties, either you take weaponry and you want to change people and, uh, and use unlawful means to achieve a lawful re result, even then actually you, are, if you have failed or actually if you uh, become one of those Muslims who are just uh, passive and just actually going with the flow and following the crowd, then you are unsuccessful as well. The middle way stand your way in the truth and just have to start conveying and let yourself pass to the next world whilst doing this. Alhamdulillah, you have nothing to be uh, hopeless or despair. Nothing. Oh brother, someone was standing before quiet. Get this uh, the other brother, yes, sir. Do you want to ask a question or what? Assalamu alaikum. Um, it's my first time here, and my question is that every month um, Ramzan comes every once a year. We have radio stations, uh, like Radio Ramzan, we used to have radio stations in Bolton. 
uh, they play a certain type of music with an upbeat to it. Is that allowed to listen to it with certain arts, like remixes and so on? And the brother asked earlier on, um, uh, if you go to a, a restaurant and it's got Christmas decorations and an alcohol and so on. Uh, same with these radio stations. Um, they are attracting the young generation, but obviously with certain advertisements in there and certain ways of going, uh, I'm not fully aware of certain things. I would like your view on this, please, and how we can help the young generation, either if it's visible to listen to it or it's not, and so on. Please, thank you. As I said before, that a person should use a lawful means to invite people towards Deen. Not that I am inviting, I am attracting uh, low, uh, people and you adopt actually unlawful means. Then you yourself are going further away from Islam and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, so as you know, the, the Muslim Ummah, they follow different schools of thoughts. They follow different schools of thoughts and regarding halal and haram, lawful, unlawful, they have different so people sitting here, they might be someone will be following Imam Hanifa, some Imam Shafi, some another. But regarding music I would say that the majority, ninety nine percent of the all the ulama of uh, four schools of thought they have said, apart from the daf, the drum, that they have not allowed the other type of music. They are only very, very minute people, scholar, uh, who, who have said that, for example, the other is allowed if it is benefiting people. And uh, from the past scholars, one uh, a scholar has passed in uh, Muslim Spain, Imam Ibn Hazm, Undalsi. He was one of those, only one, and the one maybe others. All others are actually uh, against that. So I try to follow the, the majority, but if someone has a dalil and opinion and they are a scholar or a following, uh, I don't actually uh, go against them and I don't actually criticize them. They also are following something if they have a dalil. But as I mentioned to you, the reality in the world of knowledge is uh, that the four schools of thought, they actually don't allow anything except that the drum and things. But today, things are used uh, in, in, in different ways. So, that, that is the, uh, the view on that. And if you say we should, we are helping young people to attract towards religion through music, then I would say all mandars and churches will be filled with young people. Because in their deen, the music, the music is part of their religion, not only lawful but very praiseworthy. Hindu or church. In dono masbo mein, music is hai, ye baadat samjha jata hai. So if you see that if you are attracted to music, then how many mandars will be full? How many people will be looking at the mandars? If you go to the church, you will be sitting in the church and 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 you will be sitting in the church. They have all the ways to adapt. So still the mosques, we don't use music and things still you see, youngsters are still there. So I, and this is one thing. And second is some people, to justify their actions, they wrongly wrongly put allegations on great awliya like Khaja Mainuddin Chishti Rahmatullah Ali that the Chishtiya people they used to use music. No, they never did. The great, the, the great uh, of one of his grand khulafa, Hazrat Nazamuddin Awliya mentioned in his book 700 years ago, he said people are falsely accusing my Mashayat, Hazrat Fridudin Gan Shakar and Hazrat uh, Moinuddin Kishti that they used Kawali with music like today it is used to attract people. He said this is false quote and lately Imam Ahmad Arzaha Brevi, Rahmatullah Alayhi, uh, uh, an Indian scholar of Indian subcontinent which Muslims follow, he in his Fatawa Rizmiya also has very fiercely and very strongly condemned this that these people, one they are doing wrong things, second they attributed to awliya and awliya are those who follow the Prophet 
who was the animalist of the Prophet ﷺ, where actually this type of music and this type of thing actually they are used. But as I say, this is one view of majority, majority that they do follow. So, but we, if any scholar have their dalil and thing, they are they are responsible in the court of Allah that they will answer and they might actually get reward for that if they are truthful in there. So we don't uh, condemn them uh, outrightly, but we also should know the uh, the view or the, the the fatwa of the 99% scholars, what they are in opinion of the uh, Sunnah wal Jama. As I say, there is one or two uh, in every century, they have gone in there, but 99% are uh, against that. Plus, I don't see any more uh, benefit that those who are in favor of that, that they have attracted a lot of youngsters and uh, or actually people have become very, very pious and righteous. The two Jamaats in the world, they have a following with them, great following with them. One is Tablighi Jamaat, one is Dawat Islami. Tablighi Jamaat is a Deobandi oriented Jamaat. The Dawat Islami is Brailvi oriented Jamaat, the Molana Ilyas Qadri, Mandazi Burali. Both of them, they have the many followers in millions, and both of them don't use music at all. Tabligi Jamaat ne bhi nahi kiya music abhi istamal. Or Dawat Islami, you see their channel, Madani channel, maha aapko music ka naam hi nazar aayega. Unhote or sakti ki hoye bhi or tun ko phone karna bhi, unhone mana kiya hua hai. Bhi orat aake maha naat nahi pad sakti, bihaan nahi kar sakti. Itna strict hai, but they have the large following than all other Jamaat. Dusri sari Jamaat ko se unki followers yada hai. In the field of Dawat. आप देख रहे दुनिया में चल रहे हैं पाकिस्तान में इस्तेमाल देख ले वो भी इस्तेमाल करते हैं 25 25 लाख का 20 20 लाख का इस्तेमाल है दूसरे बड़ा तीर हमारे हमने सियासत दान कहते हैं हमने 50000 बंदा इकट्ठा कर लिया हमने 2 लाख बंदा इकट्ठा कर लिया इनका इस्तेमाल लाखों पर मिलियनों पर مشتمل हो दोनों जमातों का वो ना वो म्यूजिक इस्तेमाल करते हैं ना वो कुछ सो सो आई इवन विटनेसिंग मुशाहिदा आल्सो रिजेक्ट्स दिस आईडिया दैट म्यूजिक वो जो कर रहे हैं मेरा ख्याल है दो वो 10 बंदे 20 बैठे होंगे किसी खानकाह में और कसवाली कर रहे हैं दूसरे कुछ अपने कोई बंदा उनकी तरफ जो खास नहीं है वो नहीं सो बाय द लाइन आई हैव मेंशन टू यू अ मिडिल वे कि भाई उन जो उलमा कर रहे हैं उलमा कहते जायज है हमारे नजदीक उनको उनको बुरा भला मत कहें दे आर स्कॉलर्स लीव देम टू देमसेल्व्स दे आर रिस्पांसिबल हुएवर फॉलोस देम लीव देम टू देमसेल्व लेकिन आप मेजॉरिटी को देखें कि वो भी क्या कर रहे हैं जो आपको फिर अच्छा लगता है उसके पीछे चले एंड देन आल्सो सी द रिजल्ट रिजल्ट क्या हुआ है कि जो दैट जमात हु अलाउस फ्री इंटरेक्शन विद इंटरसेक्सेस एंड आल्सो म्यूजिक हैव दे प्रोड्यूस मोर गुड मुस्लिम्स और दोस जमात व्हिच हैव एक्चुअली इन द हैव लिमिटेड देमसेल्फ and are stricter, have they produced more good Muslim men and women? So, you know yourself. Okay. Thank you. You gave some strategies and techniques on how to invite people and the call others to success. Those who are heedless and uh, those who are not interested in the deen. We've had there's certain groups of people who they agree with what you have to say and um, the information about life after death and the punishment of death and the buzzer and so on. But still, there's no change in them. You don't see them changing or what you know getting up and changing their lifestyle, starting to do namaz and so on. Even even after agreeing and even after understanding what you have to say, is there any guidance or any techniques to help them? You are saying that there are people who you have conveyed the message, then they still not seem changing and things. You have to look at the prophets and Ambiyali Islam. They were the best people who gave dawah. Did everyone change in their life? But the majority they rejected them of their times. Even Rasulullah Sallam and he. Ali Salaam was 124,000 and the world population was in millions at that time. 
How many people accepted? How many people rejected? Now even the kuffar are actually more in number. So even Ambi so we cannot give Dawa more better than Ambiya Ali Muslam and all these people. So, so even the prophets and messengers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Fa'inna ma alaykal bala. Upon you is just conveying message puchado. Wa alayna al hisab. It's upon us that we to then take accountability. Hisab lena ke unho ne amal kiya hai nahi kiya. So we shouldn't stop that if we are, but some people, even some family that had no Islam's uh, uh, wife didn't accept him as a prophet. Imagine, 70 years old, 500 years old was there, or more. But she didn't accept, let side believing or doing what, she didn't accept him as a prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Although she was living with him, eating with him all the time there. He, one of his sons didn't accept him, his message. But that doesn't, that shouldn't change uh, our stance that we st stop conveying because our view is like uh, giving dawah like muazzin, like person who gives azan, he gives dawah for namaz invitation, doesn't he? Every mosque, Muazzin, he gives dawah invitation for Azan. If people don't, if less people come, or if some people are not coming after even listening, does he stop giving Azan? No, to koi bhi na hai. Usne to Azan apni deni deni hai. To humara kaam hai Muazzin, hum hai dawah dene wale. Azan Muazzin se sabak seekhe. Ke koi aa gaya, thik hai, na aya, Allah usko puchega, ye to responsibility de de. But if he doesn't give the adhan, he will be questioned as well. Why didn't you call people towards Allah? Subhanahu wa ta'ala. To aapki responsibility, you have to draw a line that your responsibility is to convey, not force or trust on people the deen or the message. Yes, you should use wisdom, you should use hikmah, different strategy, you want goodness. But people will react differently, like they reacted differently with Prophet Islam. Some try to Nauzubillah martyred him, some try to actually, uh, false allegations they put upon him, they said he's a ma magician, Nauzubillah, some said actually he is not telling the truth, Nauzubillah, some said he is possessed by Jinnat, Nauzubillah, and all the three people come with different things. And some people, they gave life for him, they would uh, give anything for him, and they stayed with him, and it was the greatest blessing for them. So now, people will react differently as well. But that shouldn't change that you are going, you become despaired, oh, I've been doing this for 10 years, and then and, you know, this person is not still listening. Your job was not actually to make him uh, practice your message, but to convey them the message in different ways and forms. Yeah. That's why people become suddenly depressed, people are not listening, etc. Uski job Allah Bhak ne Asan Wazan se sabak si hai. Azan de de aap aur uske baad chhod de bandho pa. Jo aye namaz mein bhoot achhi baat hai. Jo na aye Allah uska hisab de pa. Yes. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Just going back to the method that you gave us, Sheikh Saad, once you made that connection <coughs> with the individuals and you're talking to them about the greatness of Allah and the covenant, etc., you mentioned that we can also talk to them about the virtues of Salah. Should we also talk to them about the punishments as well and like the Adab um, and things like that? As I mentioned, that, as I showed you in that uh, picture, that there is mention of both sides, uh, meaning uh, the good side the hell side, the paradise side, but try to be, uh, tell people the good side first. Firstly, it's Basharat, Bashir, talk about Jannah. Some people will come towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when they will listen to Jannah. Some people will come when they listen to hell. This is a carrot and stick approach. People have different natures. And the both should be balanced, uh, should be there. Bashir and wa Nazira, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, these qualities of the prophets were that they were giving of glad tidings and also warners of actually the consequences if they don't follow the both. But the 
good side, meaning the paradise, the fazail, should be dominant, dominant. Because when you sometimes mention the punishment, uh, that you will be punished this, and the person think, I'm already condemned person, so no use me killing. You know, they come to draw wrong conclusions sometimes. But if you mention virtue, they think, yes, I can get something extra. And with that, then actually, you know, a person. So first we start with this thing and sometimes mention the other as well. So after developing a sound relationship with the person, how will one know that is appropriate time to give dawah? How will one know that this is the appropriate time to give dawah? How you will know is it's like the relationship is like you're building thirst in a person. How will you know that a person is thirsty when he says, give me water? So meaning, when he says that, how can I save myself, brother, the hell you mentioned, how can I save myself from there? How can I save myself from all this evil? How can I go to Jannah? Or he says, I want to be a friend of Allah, I don't want to be a friend, is there a way? So when this response type comes from him, that is the time that you give the water, when he shows the thirst. My concern is, uh, I know we have a lot of sects in, in, in Islam, but the one sect where the followers are of Imam Abu Hanifa, and we have the Tablighi Jumaat, Jumaat Islamia, and Relvism, and all the rest of it, how do we go about trying to stop the infighting where there's a constant battle, especially I feel from the pulpits of the masjids where, you know, simple, ordinary people uh, are not being focused to get together rather than they're being made to split. And I feel that this is a, one uh, uh, big area where we Muslims are doing more harm and damage against ourselves than I feel what maybe a non-Muslim uh, is doing out there. Well, regarding that, firstly, you should know that you don't have control over all these people who are sitting in the pulpit. The purple person who sits in the pulpit, he has the control over the mic or that he has opened a TV channel. He is going to speak whatever he wish and we don't have. So what you are saying, what we can do, what we can do is if people are spreading chaos and things, you don't become one of those people. Firstly, meaning you have control over yourself firstly, actually. And the way to do is, as I said, that you bring people towards the unanimous teachings of Ambiya and Awliya and Sulaha, which are in the Tariqa and Muhammadiya. For example, as we, you have seen first, the Tariq starts with, the, for example, we say these things, no one normally disagrees with these things. Our purpose is the pleasure of Allah. No one disagrees with this. We should have humbleness and sincerity. No one. We should give preference to the commands of Allah, to the Rasulullah uh, love and sunnah, compassion upon creation, be in the presence of Allah. No room for agreement, disagreement. We should not sin with the seven organs, with the mind, bad thoughts. We should have jealousy, etc. And our, we, we should have enlightened inner selves, no one is. We should have correct beliefs, fit, whichever we are following, striving. Meaning, bring yourself and people towards this, these main unanimous things. And being yourself the part of the solution, meaning wherever there is uh, something like this, you don't participate in there. And secondly, it will be appropriate that if you have leverage over something, let's say you are... Um, committee member of a mosque or you build a mosque 
Oh, you build a zabia, you are there. There you can say, I don't want these things. I want the positive teaching of Islam and the Sunnah. And I don't want these things. Because these other people, some, they understand they are not doing the right thing, but it is just that their uh, task which they have taken to disintegrate and uh, that's where their, you may say, income and things that they come in, in spite of. And you've seen this infighting, it's not between Hanafis or anything like this. Even each sect, like if there is a, for example, Brailvi sect, or they are, inside them there are groups, they are fighting between each other. They are putting allegations. So one says, well, what is this? If it was a difference of opinion between Wahhabi and Sunni, it's understandable. But why are these Sunnis fighting between themselves? Why are these Wahhabis fighting in between? So this shows there is a mentality and these people will exist. All you can do is you don't become part and parcel of them. And secondly, if you have leverage, control over anywhere, any channel, any mosque, any place, you pay your part. That's you are responsible for. Can I remind the uh, other brothers, please, can you just limit your question to the topic which is mentioned today? Uh, like I said earlier, if you have any fictitious messiahs and so on, there are other brothers here, which I can also um, able to answer the question about the non um, answer in, in the, in the, in the masjid, inshallah. Just limit to the question, uh, and the topic they've been asked. Three can be tough here over here. Because you have to do halqa, faqida, and fiqh bhi aapne karna hai. So, one does me break, that's what they do karne. Oh, and inshallah try to understand this what has been said there will be a recap and also I will ask some questions as well maybe tomorrow so that actually you, you understand and like brother Ilyas and Shalom you see Rasulullah loves his ummah he wants his ummah to be a, all ummah go in paradise and if you become a tool of that or a part of that you will also become close to the Prophet Alayhi Salaam and you have uh, uh, that potential. So firstly, I again summarize uh, to you I, that I mentioned to you that the disease of heedlessness, person, people sleeping in ghafla, yourself or and others, don't mention any do's and don'ts. First, just interact with them, and then even mention just actually the thing which I have mentioned about hell and paradise, reality of dunya and these things. Uh, these things and behave with them respect another. No matter they are sinful, but invite them towards deen, like Allah SWT mentioned to Musa al Islam, you actually you will find then there will be more uh, positive and good results uh, rather than so that like the, our brother is respectable honorable brother was saying, people have meaning have machine guns of fatwas, but still people are not changing, they have not taken any heat. When the fatwa ye bhi kafir hai, wo mushrik ho gaya, flan ho gaya, isse to koi fark. Pyaar mahabbat se, aur samjhane samjhane se, log baat sun lete hai, to kareeb aa jate hai. To ye baat is. Thik hai, jazakallah, subhanak allahumma wa bihamdik. Nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nasawfiru wa natubu ilayhi.